All right, it's time for another video. It's time for um. Oh, it's time for a English roundup again. English national football team roundup again. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. You know what's so funny? Following the fan channels on this thing. The fans. The fans are really funny. <laughs> The fans are so funny. You know, there are some players in the English national setup who are solely responsible for their own performances. And there are other players where Gareth Southgate is responsible for their performances. Now, it's not a race thing. Right? People like to make this a race thing because they... Because, cause, well... Because it's they they can defeat the race issue very easily, and then they think they can justify their quote unquote football opinion. You see, this is another thing. There is an objective reality that has to be noted. Not everything is an opinion. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, let me get down to this. So there are some players that are responsible for their own performances. Can you guess who they are? It's one, you might want to pause and take a guess, but one, Bukayo Saka, he's responsible for his own performance. Two, Declan Rice. Three, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Four, Jude Bellingham. And I might even add Gwehi to that. We'll have to see what happens. <laughs> we'll have to see what happens if England were to lose. But well... Why are these players responsible for their own performances, but others are not? For instance, uh, Phil Foden. If you, if you go to any of these fan channels, I'm not necessarily talking about the talking heads on the screen, although they do it as well. But if you go to these fan channels for the football, you'll find people in the comment sections, people in the chats, and some of the talking heads on the screen doing this thing where... If you're talking about Phil Foden having a bad game, oh, it's Gareth Southgate. Southgate is responsible for that. If Palmer were to have a bad game, they would blame Southgate. Saka has a bad game, oh, that's Bukayo Saka being trash. This is how it is. This is how it is. It's not a race thing. There's black people doing it as well. It's not, it's not about race. It's about club before country. That's what all these guys are doing. Right? Y'all... Y'all have no principles binding you, so this is what happens. This is what happens, right? Declan Rice. It's not a race thing. I say, although this might be a race thing in the Anglo in the Anglosphere for all I fucking know. But Declan Rice, why does he get the umph? He gets the umph because he's actually Irish. <laughs> he gets the umph because he's actually Irish. It's as simple as. Declan Rice is responsible for all his own performances. Southgate will never be blamed, even though Declan Rice is being is is being instructed to perform a a role that he's not equipped to perform. But then again, a lot of these English these English football fans are of the belief that Declan Rice is some sort of playmaker. That's an anchor man, bro. He's an anchor man. He's he's closer to Makaleli than he is to Pirlo, but whatever. That's that's gonna take a few years to sink in still for these men. But he's another one that's responsible for his own performances. And then you got Jude Bellingham, right? They're saying Jude Bellingham is overrated now. Fascinating, huh? <laughs> Jude Bellingham overrated. Wow. Blow me down, bro. <laughs> Blow me down. Blow me the fuck! I I really can't believe like this is a word that has been uttered a bit too often over the past two weeks. I just cannot believe that one. So there's that. Bellingham, you know, when they when you critique Bellingham, Bellingham is always responsible for his own performances. It's never Gareth. It's never Gareth Southgate. I suppose Harry Kane is is the one. <laughs> Harry Kane is the one player who is actually, well, 
Harry Kane is one player where they don't use the Southgate stick. They'll just say, oh, Harry Kane, is, this is Harry Kane. This is what he do. Well, I suppose people are coming to the understanding that Harry Kane is a serial trophy dodger. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jack Simon Jordan. Simon Jordan's quotable on that one. And trains, trains, you know. Trains, trains Alexander Arnold. It's never get, it's never, it's never that Southgate that has misdeployed him, misinstructed him, misused him, or what have you. It's never that. It's just that oh, Trent is shit. If Kyle Walker were to have a bad game, it would be Southgate to blame. Promise you that. That's what all these fans would be saying. I have enough data. I have enough observations. If it Phil Foden, right? There's a stat about Phil Foden. <laughs> There's a stat about Phil Foden that he's passed the ball more times to Jordan Pickford, who was the English goalkeeper, than he has to Harry Kane, who was the English striker. Three to one. You want to know who they blamed for that? They blamed Southgate. It's not Foden. If it was Saka passing the ball three times as often to Pickford than to Harry Kane, you know what they'd be saying? They'd be saying Saka's rubbish. That's what they'd be saying. They'd be saying start Palmer. But you know what? These people lack conviction. All the people saying this shit, they lack conviction. They have no belief in what they're saying. And you know how I know they have no belief? Because, well... <laughs> Maybe I had some part of maybe I had some part to play in this, but well Arsenal fans are doing the interesting thing now. And I've definitely been one of them saying this, wherein okay, if Saka and Rice are so shit as the rival fans would like you to believe, it's club ahead of country. Alright? So we're talking about rival fans here. But if they're as shit as the rival fans would like you to believe, then don't start them. Matter of fact, don't play them. Matter of fact, leave them at the hotel. Send them home. You know what they do when you say that? You want to know what they do when you say that? They say, oh, oh you can't do that. Oh, all of a sudden, soccer's not that bad. All of a sudden, rice is not that bad. All of a sudden, oh, it's just Southgate, bro. All of a sudden. That's a fascinating one. <laughs> That's a fascinating one. You know, if, if things were up to me, right? If things were up to me, I would take Bellingham, Saka, Rice, and Trent, and probably Kobe Manu as well, because, you know, if England were to lose and Kobe Manu were to be on the field, it would be a bit of a kerfuffle. It would be a real kerfuffle. <laughs> Uh, on the social media, I tell you what. So, if it were up to me, I would not be having any of these players play. I want to see the English fans actually apply their football knowledge that they claim to have. Apply it, lads. Show me what you know. Because I know y'all don't know shit. Genuinely. I've watched y'all long enough on this YouTube thing, talking football. Where everything's an opinion. Oh, it's just my football opinion, bro. This is such a bullshit word people hide behind an opinion. So what? There is no objective reality? Okay, that's an interesting one. There's no objective reality when it comes to football. Everything is an opinion. This is how they hide. This is how they hide their poor football knowledge, their poor football takes, their questionable politics as it were this is how they hide all of these things everything is hidden behind an opinion this is how they hide their in-group preference it's all an opinion funny that funny 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 lads you are but I tell you what if you're ever talking about One of the star boys who's got the complexion for the connection. Hmm. Well, if you're talking about one of the star boys who, one, has the complexion for the connection, and two, 
has the lineage for the connection. They're all the way English. And they're not part Irish or something. Right? All of a sudden, it's Southgate. All of a sudden, the objective reality can be noted. Oh no, that's just Southgate making the players look crap. And I don't want no people coming in trying to deny this shit. Seriously. I've seen what I've seen. I could have taken a screen cap. I didn't fucking bother because we're going to get plenty more observations as the tournament goes on. I don't believe England are going to win. I don't believe England deserve to win. England don't, England don't even deserve the players that they're playing, half of them. But anyway. Anyway, right? If England lose... <laughs> if England were to lose a game, I promise you what? Guehi will probably be getting the brunt of the heat off the back of that loss. It won't be stones. No, it won't be stones. They like stones too much. You see... English football fans... We can all see you. We can all see you. We know just how dumb you are as well. Because a lot of you are insisting that Rice is some sort of playmaker. Well, we know just how dumb you are. Let me be nice to the English fans for a bit. right? If you want to win the tournament, what should England do? So curious. If you want to win the tournament, England should play the 4 3 3, but you're never going to get Gareth Southgate to play the 4 3 3. He's not smart enough to coach the 4 3 3 anyway. But hey, if you want to win, it's 4 3 3. You've got Rice, Bellingham, and Foden as a midfield trio. If I have to explain to you how they are orientated in that 4 3 3 midfield, well, that really just cements my prior point. <laughs> <laughs> that really just cements my prior point. Who are the wingers? You can have Saka on either side. It doesn't really matter which side he's on. And then the other side, you'll have either Foden. Well, it won't be Foden. It will be Palmer or Gordon. Who's the striker? Probably Harry Kane. You see, Harry Kane would actually work really well in a 4-3-3. But, but... There's no English manager who would there's no English manager or coach who would be smart enough to coach it. Maybe Michael Carrick, I don't know. We'll see what happens with Michael Carrick and his managerial career. We'll see what we'll just have to see what happens there. But English fans, y'all are funny. Y'all are funny. Oh, my dear Anglos, y'all are funny, funny little critters to watch. Seriously. Watching y'all at work, as soon as anyone gets serious about... Oh, just leave Saka out then. No, oh, and they're an Arsenal fan. Oh, just leave Saka out then. Don't even play him. Leave him out. Because, of course, if Saka were to come on for five minutes at the end of the game, as we saw in Iceland, he's going to get blamed for the loss. It's not about what the media have done, it's about what the fans are doing, it's about what the people on the ground are doing. I can't blame the media for that, are you mad? Are you mad? I haven't seen a media personality in the chat rooms dropping their referred up opinion, I haven't seen that. Dropping their smoked out quote unquote football opinions, I ain't seen that. It's all people on the ground. It doesn't matter what race you are. It matters which club you are. And Bellingham, I suppose, being based in Spain, is not going to have any of the English, uh, any of the English club fans defend him. Funny that. All right, England are a mess. English football is a mess, or the national team is a mess. But I mean, what are people expecting? 
I really ponder sometimes, like, what are people expecting from the English national side? The homegrown rules aren't actually strict enough. You know, if, if we're being serious, then every team is really supposed to have something akin to 12 at the minimum homegrown players. That should be the rule. Instead of 8, it should be 12, but, well... Well, the English could never do that because they wouldn't be able to fill their teams with foreign talent and juice up the credibility of their league. They wouldn't be able to do that. But they would have a better national team. If nothing else than on the fact that there would be more competition. They would have a better national team. But y'all couldn't handle that. Because that would mean less foreign players, that would mean less foreign talent, that would mean less flair. And quite frankly, the English football fans could never think far enough ahead to actually to actually make a decision that would benefit their national team across the next four generations of players. They could never think that far ahead. I mean, heck... The English football fans are so terrified of debuting youngsters, debuting academy grads. They're so terrified of it. Like you're never going to do anything with that. You're never going to reach any sort of real relevance. You're never going to get over the line doing that. Let's be real about it. Let's be all the way fucking real about it. You're always going to be second to the punch when it comes to identifying elite talent. You're always going to be second to the punch when it comes to actually actually innovating in the game. You're always going to be second to the punch. I mean, heck, there has not been an English manager that's won the Premier League. That should tell you everything, right? Right? But you know what? It's fine, lads. It's fine. Southgate's probably not going to drop Saka. I wish he would. He's probably not going to drop Rice. I wish he would. And as a result of that, we're just going to have to keep on suffering these, frankly, air-headed football opinions. We're just going to have to keep on suffering them. But hey, you know what? We're here to give some pushback. <laughs> man, you wouldn't believe how scared these men them got. How scared these niggas got. You wouldn't believe how scared they got when all of a sudden people say, oh, okay, so don't play soccer. Yeah, we want to see Palmer play. Play him. I want to see Palmer play. I don't want soccer to play. I want to see Palmer play. He's invariably going to fail. Because what is being coached by Southgate? And I want to see what the people say. I want to see if they hold them to the same standard as Saka. Because that's what they pretend to do. Until it's actually time to hold them to the same standard as we saw with Iceland. Y'all are pathetic. Pathetic football fans. Anyway. Anyway. That should be the video. Before I say some more spicy shit. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Peace.